The universe is trying to teach me to be patient today. Sharon Hornoff from here. Welcome to day 1,735 of What Ship to Now. Documenting the journey originally as I went from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world. And I started doing uh, documenting. I was doing a, a blog a long time ago and my vision has failed over the last few years. And as such, I decided I better start doing and capturing what I was doing in a different medium. So I started to do videos, primarily because I was scared to do videos, just like everybody else is. Usually in the beginning, there's very few people that just jump on and say, I love video, I'm awesome. Most of us struggle. We hop on, we do some horrible videos, and then we just keep going and we get better and better and better at it. We figure out what our voice is, figure out what we want to say, and then we move forward. So today for my content, I, I produce content every day. I think it's been going on about five years now. I think it's probably my fifth year or so. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, fifth year. So uh, for my Supersize Your Business group, I produce a, I've been sharing an idiom for the last couple of years since I moved. I needed to find a way to talk about something every day but not have to think really, really hard about it. So I started sharing an idiom, what it means, where it came from, and how can you apply it to growing and building your business. And just kind of stuck with me and, and I feel good about it because I learn something every day and I help other people to open our minds and look at things from a different perspective, all of us, me included. If I'm learning, I'm, I want to help other people to be more open-minded and look at things as well. And so today's was boil the ocean. I've actually never heard this particular idiom. Uh, supposedly it's overused in corporate America and in corporate environments, but I personally have never experienced it. I guess I got out of corporate in 2004, so maybe that's long enough, long enough ago now that this has become popular, overused, and there was an article in Forbes about it, which kind of made me laugh because uh, people write articles about whatever they want to get attention, right? The media covers stories to get attention. So is it that it's so overused or is it that <clears throat> somebody just wanted to get attention, which now made it more popular and got it more used? I don't remember when the article was from now, but, but a few years ago. And they said, oh, it's so overused. We need to retire the expression, boil the ocean. Well, it's an idiom. Idioms don't usually retire. They come in and out of favor, just like fashion, right? Things change all the time, but they come back in fashion. I mean, there's only so many ways you can dress people. And what's, you know, I I get horrified sometimes when the stuff from the 70s and the, the early 80s comes back around again, but it always comes back around again. Uh, <clears throat> and so if we don't like what the fashion is right now, just wait a couple of years and it's going to change again. So boil the ocean, interesting idiom. I, like I said, I wasn't familiar with it. Am I guilty of actually doing it based on what it means. It means to undertake a huge, almost impossible task or to take a task or a project or a job and blow it into this huge thing when it really doesn't have to be. And I think when I was younger and just getting started in different businesses, I definitely did this. I, I made things seem way harder and I actually made them way harder for myself than they had to be. And the older I get, the more I've realized the power of simplification, the power of having a framework or a process that is yours that you use and apply to everything that you're doing. Uh, a couple of years ago with the pandemic, I came up with the SOAP framework. Now, I've always had a process for dealing with changes and challenges in my life. I just never thought about it or gave it a name before. And the pandemic was a perfect opportunity for me to do the get up and go challenge. Every month we did a 30 plus day challenge. Uh, every other month, not every month, for 2020 and 2021 because <clears throat> primarily I needed to keep going and moving forward in my life and my businesses and my my world as everything around us was pretty much crashing down. I mean, everything had, that we had known before, most of us, our jobs, our schools for the kids or grandkids, etc., all of that just got blown up in a really, really short period of time. And it wasn't just for one of us because a lot of times we're going through our own traumas and dramas but it was for pretty much everybody on the planet simultaneously and when that happened i think that's something that hasn't happened very often in the history of of humanity right there have been a few things but uh, not a lot so this was a, a big deal uh, so we started to get up and go challenge and we did uh that and then this year we're doing an annual challenge this is actually my fifth annual challenge that i've done online i've done annual challenges since my sudden cardiac arrest. I don't think I've ever done an annual challenge before that. 
Um, but in 2010, following my sudden cardiac arrest, I knew I needed to make massive lifestyle changes. If I was still going to be here in three years or six years or now, because it's going on 12, 13 years, right? 12 years, just to have my 12th anniversary of, of uh, Drop and Dead, right? So <clears throat> obviously I knew I needed to make those changes. And so I set a, my an annual challenge for myself to exercise every day. And basically, whenever you, you set a big goal, be, and if you knew me before, saying I was going to exercise every day for a year was like boiling the ocean. It was definitely miraculous because I don't think I had ever in my life exercised every day for even a month, much less a year. Maybe, you know, sophomore year track team, we exercised every day for like, what, how long's the track season? Six weeks, eight weeks? I don't remember. That's how long it's been. But for the most part, didn't practice anything every day for a year. I did like to practice making cookies and cooking. I loved cooking. So uh, I practiced that probably every day for a year, but I didn't set it out as a challenge. I just did it because it was fun for me and it was a, a creative outlet. So I definitely was boiling the ocean when I set that goal. And everybody, whenever you pick a big thing that other people think is impossible for you, they tell you and they, they are not particularly supportive and they're kind of undermining and and mean about it and the people I loved and cared about the most were kind of mean about it but that just made me more stubborn and 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 made me more determined to do it and of course I did it and I think it was eight years before I missed a day exercising and that was because I had a health challenge that made it impossible for me to walk <laughs> so if you can't walk you can't exercise. I did sit in bed and try to do stuff with my arms but I wasn't very effective and it definitely didn't count as exercising every day in my mind. So this year's annual challenge is the BU 365 day challenge. We're doing one thing every day that improves us in some way or to, to continually improve us and to help us move toward our goals and objectives automatically. And as part of that, of course, I'm sharing the SOAP framework every, every month and we're starting that again this week. So today our challenge was to think about what do we want to apply the soap framework to? What's something in our life that we want to change? Something that's bothering us? Something we want to implement or get put to work in our life? Maybe we want to start a new habit. Maybe we want to break an old habit. Maybe we want to organize something. Maybe we want to, I, I said, I think what I'm going to do is I've got a new software I need to learn and implement in my businesses. And so, um, and, and could I hire somebody to do it? Yes, but I don't want to because it's things in my business that I need to, in my mind, because of the things I like to do, have some control over. So I want to learn it. There's courses that go along with it. There's the software. And then there's the applying the software to my actual businesses that I want to do. So I think that's going to be what I soap this week. And then I've also got about a month long trip coming up in a couple of weeks and I've done nothing to plan for it. I picked an outfit for my nephew's wedding. That's the only thing I've got done with respect to planning that trip. So we talked about that today. We have to pick the one thing and then we're going to apply the soul framework over the next four days. The S, the O, the A, and the P, and that will get us to the weekend. Uh, that's all I've got. I've got a gazillion things to do, obviously, because i got to do my personal challenge because I do the challenge right along with everybody, right? I don't just say, hey, you should do this. I actually do it. And by doing it, I realize, okay, that was the best exercise. That was, that was, or that was super duper hard. I thought it was just this ask a question and answer, but then I got into it and my mind spent, you know, half the day in and out of this particular topic, which is good, right? It's all about understanding ourselves better and becoming a better, continually improving version of ourselves because we are our own best project and best science experiment. At least I've treated myself like my own science experiment for a long time. All right, if I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Bye.